Today I'm ranking Politics and Wars alliances with a tier list. I've made videos about how powerful alliances are in the past, so this video is going to be a little different. Instead of ranking alliances by how powerful they are, I'm going to rank alliances on how successful they are and how much potential they have. This means that smaller alliances that are making the game fun for their members will do better than big alliances which are not doing anything. S tier, the best alliances. A tier, great alliances. B tier, above average. C tier, average. D tier, below average. And F tier, trash. Advanced Syndicalist Mechanics. C tier. They have been around for a few years and they haven't really stood out. People only know them because of their out of character events. Terminus Est. A tier. They are a whale alliance that is competing with Grumpy to have the most large nations in the game. Grumpy is currently winning, but Terminus Est is expected to overtake them at some point this year. This is because Terminus Est is an extension of Eclipse, and they have a pipeline to recruit new nations. Grumpy doesn't recruit new players at all, and can only poach members from their rivals. The Hive, B tier. They are a small and relatively weak alliance, but their leadership has contributed to the wiki and the community in a positive way over a number of years. They are also joining new nation sims. I think their efforts will pay off this year and they'll become a top alliance if they can solve some of their problems. Name Withheld. They were once the legendary alliance Seven Kingdoms, but now they're just the sidekick of the Knights Radiant. They're similar to ASM in that way, but their propaganda and military reputation are much better. New Polar Order. F tier. They were one of the most powerful alliances from 2006 to 2020. Most people expected they would outlive politics and war, just like they outlived cyber nations and a dozen other nation sims in between. Most people were wrong, because there's barely 10 active nations in MPO right now. They are not even a shadow of their former selves, because if I didn't mention them from time to time, none of you would know they exist. Dark Brotherhood, A tier, the opposite of New Polar Order. If you'd asked me last month, I would have put Dark Brotherhood in D tier. They were boring and militarily incompetent. Their leader was considered easily duped after he was convinced to destroy the Viridian Entente, one of the oldest and most powerful alliances in the game. But they were a very different alliance now. They're spending their bank to become a real fighting force. They performed well in their last war. They've got experienced players to join their government. And they moved to a very powerful sphere led by Rose. The only thing I'd note is that they are likely to merge or rebrand this year. People don't associate the name Dark Brotherhood with a competent alliance, and they're now surrounded by advisors and allies that find branding very important. The Syndicate, S tier. The Syndicate has been on a losing streak. They've lost wars, money, reputation, members, government, and allies, and yet they are still one of the strongest alliances in the game. I'm putting them in S tier because even at their lowest, they're more capable than most alliances, and it's likely they bounce back. Mayhem, C tier. They're supposedly good fighters, but I haven't seen any evidence of that. They're using the goons flag though, which leads me to believe they're politically blind. That association is really bad for their block's propaganda. Eclipse, S tier. They formed in 2020, and after combining with Test, they have become one of the most powerful alliances in the game. They arguably have the most score and cities, but it's very unlikely they have the most money or influence. What they have accomplished is very impressive, but they are probably one of the least stable alliances in the game, and they have a lot of enemies. There's a saying, the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Guardian, A tier. They are one of the oldest and most powerful alliances in the game, but you wouldn't know it unless you listen to the top diplomats ranting into the early morning. Guardian has enough large nations to lead its own sphere, but instead they are following their ally Grumpy around and trying to be as safe as possible. They're A tier purely because of their potential, and my sympathy for all those diplomats hoping this will be the year they do something. Serene Way, B tier. The Way and SRF merged a few weeks ago and Serene Way was the result. It's hard to tell if they will succeed. I'm going to be optimistic because there are a few good signs. Specifically, they are publishing their guides for anyone to use and critique, and they are prioritizing the quality of members over the quantity. Yar, D tier. They are the game's largest bank, and likely have the most resources in the game's history, but they also don't do anything besides bank, and because of that, I'll place them in D tier. Cathago, C tier. 
They would be A tier or B tier, but they messed up really badly. And then they did it again. First they got into an argument with their allies and got kicked out of their block. Then they spied on an enemy and got attacked. Then they deserted their new allies in that same war. And then after getting kicked out by their new allies, they insulted the next alliance they tried to ally. It's possible they bounce back though, and that's why I'm putting them in C tier. They're not average, they're just somewhere between great and terrible. I don't know who this alliance is, F tier. Roman Empire, D tier. They were originally a TKR protectorate called Empire of Romans that recruited using Reddit advertisements. TKR convinced their leader to merge them into TKR, but most of the members refused and formed a Roman Empire. Almost every week there's some sort of argument about Roman Empire's government, and that's why it placed them slightly below average. To their credit though, they got revenge on TKR this year, which isn't the easiest thing to accomplish. United Purple Nations, C tier. They are a very old and famous alliance, but they haven't been a very powerful one for at least six years. Most people would put them in D tier, but I think they're undergoing a mini renaissance. Lots of their old leaders are returning, and they're doing their best to improve the alliance without changing its culture. Oblivion, A tier. The only alliance that has consistently been paid tens of billions for mercenary work, and the alliance that has faced the least consequences for its actions. They've been very successful this year, and they're more politically influential than they have ever been before, so I think their rank is well deserved, despite the fact they only have 20 members. House Stark, C tier. They're an okay alliance on the surface, but if you study the game's history, they are very disappointing. HS formed in 2016, and they were a TS ally for most of their existence. It doesn't make sense that TS has been so successful, while HS has been outperformed by much newer alliances that have faced much bigger challenges. I mention this because there is one area they do stand out. HS is very well respected. Their word carries a lot of weight. That respect would put them in B tier, but their lackluster growth relegates them to C tier in my book. The Fighting Pacifists B tier. Taxes are optional in TFP and because of this they attract a lot of solo players that aren't interested in helping their team and will leave in times of trouble. There are exceptions but generally this has been true since they formed. Despite this flaw their leadership has gradually improved the alliance and it stands out as one of the largest and most powerful alliances in the game. It takes a lot to turn your biggest disadvantage into an advantage and I think that puts them above average. Requiem D tier. Requiem is led by Partisan, the most influential diplomat in politics and war history. Their membership is composed of many old and famous leaders and government members. However, they are a protectorate and not a particularly interesting one. I'm sure they'll start a war this year or merge and it will be very interesting. But until then, they're a boring whale alliance that isn't likely to be around next year. World Task Force, F tier. They are a very old whale alliance, which still uses forums to communicate with their members. They've been given multiple chances to improve, their latest being TKR offering them a protectorate and advisors, and uh, a few months passed and absolutely no progress was made. United Amar, D tier. They are politics and war's only Muslim alliance, and they have the potential to be massive. That potential hasn't been realized yet, even though they've been around for a long time, and they aren't quite as strong as other alliances, so I have to put them in D tier. I will note this. They have a massive social network. Very few alliances know as much as they do. The Legion, C tier. Most of their players are from cyber nations and they've just joined this game and wrote other people's coattails. I don't have much to say about them because they're average in almost every way. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. They're a clean slate. If they ever choose to be interesting, they can be. The Coven, B tier. The Coven is attempting imperialism in the lower tier. They're conquering other alliances and building an empire. I have no doubt they will inevitably be destroyed by the enemies they are creating. But until that happens, they are a lot of fun to watch. Dead Rabbits, C tier. They performed well in a few major wars and they've been pretty outspoken, particularly against banks and businesses. I can't think of anything that makes them really stand out though. A lot of their work is behind the scenes. Bourbon Street, F tier. Bad Company Vanguard, Front of Records Covenant, San Rosen, Clarence Trouble in the Ampersand, We Didn't Start the Fire. 
Our pixels been burning since our best has been turning. Bourbon Street is the eighth rebrand of Bad Company. I can say with absolute certainty they will merge and rebrand again in the next six months. And I will need to add more alliances to that song. Church of Adam, B tier. They were an inactive whale alliance for a long time, with a penchant for barking loudly at bigger alliances. It was all bark and no bite for a very long time. Then they built hundreds of nuclear weapons and declared war on TKR. Despite being outnumbered and doomed to lose, they did enough damage that TKR had to attack other alliances to avoid being outgrown. Church of Adam's kamikaze attack caused a global war, and because of that, they deserve B tier. Camelot, B tier. At the end of 2021, they had less than 40 members, and they were enemies with every other alliance in the game. Camelot had no military, no money, and no allies. Now they have the most members in the game, they are in the top 10 by revenue, and they built a sphere of themselves so they didn't have to work with other people. Camelot's potential and their resilience is why they're B tier. And because they're Camelot, I'm sure people will comment on this video that they should be F tier, and others will argue that they're S tier. So, they're in B tier. Have fun. Paradise, A tier. Their alliance description might as well say, from the people that brought you cataclysm. Paradise is the product of a series of mergers organized by a well-known diplomat. They will probably be very capable and they might even be long-lasting like Cataclysm. These types of alliances generally rely on momentum. If they win a bunch of wars, the members will unify, and if they lose a bunch, they will fracture. I don't know who this alliance is, F tier. United Socialist Nations, F tier. They are a communist alliance that hasn't accomplished very much. Their leaders are very polite though. Respublica Romana, D tier. Their leader has the largest nation in the game. Aside from that, it's a small group of players that donate money to him and chill. They'll probably keep doing the same thing until the game ends. And as I was making this video, they disbanded and joined Rose. Well, at least you know more about the largest nation in the game. And not all of my predictions come right. Grumpy, S tier. They have the most large nations in the game, and they have successfully prevented any of the superpowers like Rose, Tias, and Eclipse from controlling the high tier for the past few years. They are decisive in global wars. If they're on your side, statistically you're going to win. That said, the superpowers will inevitably catch up, and it's not clear how many members Grumpy will lose when that happens. They're S tier for now, but they might be B tier next year. Arg, C tier. Arg is the pirate alliance. They're enjoying a renaissance like UPN, since old leaders have returned and they're launching more wars. But they don't have large nations anymore, so they can't really affect global wars, or really threaten any of the big alliances like they could in the past. At most, they just prove enough of a nuisance that the bigger alliances will pay them to go away. Western Republic, D tier. They were a very resilient alliance, but also very incompetent. Almost every week, they steal something and then lose it. I'm putting them in D tier because at least they're trying to succeed, and it's possible they could turn things around. Latum, D tier. They're similar to United Amar in that they cater to a specific group of people. Latum is run by and for Spanish-speaking players. They have the potential to be massive, just like United Amar. But they haven't realized their potential yet, and their capabilities are lackluster. Federated States of Orbis, D tier. They are one of the few democracies in politics and war, and they were pretty successful this year. They bounced back from a number of big wars and signed a treaty with TKR. Unfortunately, they had a leadership crisis. The treaty with TKR got cancelled and most of their large nations left. It's likely they disband in the next few months, but if they don't, it's possible they will bounce back. The Immortals, A tier. Their capabilities are a subject of intense debate. Their allies will always profess they are fantastic, and as soon as the treaty is cancelled, they'll turn around and call them trash. The last time I fought with them was in 2021, and they only defended their own nations. They wouldn't help the overall war effort. I understand some of the criticism, but my experience was a long time ago, and as an observer, they won a lot of wars and remained one of the largest alliances in the game. I don't see them encountering any challenges next year, and that's why they're A tier. Black Knights, D tier. 
they were one of the most powerful alliances in the game for a few years. Then they were a shadow of their former selves. And now they exist. Their Melcom team is pretty good, and if they led the alliance, I'd say it has a lot of potential. But they don't. Uh, their current leader is a great coder, perhaps the best in PNW, but he isn't very active. Most of their members are not very active. The Knights Radiant, B tier. Most people would probably put TKR in S tier, and some would argue they are the most powerful, influential, and competent alliance in the game. I think those people are thinking of the TKR from a few years ago. TKR was the most powerful, influential, and competent alliance in the game. They are not any of those things now. TKR hasn't declined. They've remained about the same. The issue is that all their rivals have improved, and newer alliances have caught up and then passed them. TKR has declined in relative power, and I don't see them catching up. They had a chance to catch up last year when they were in the strongest block in the game, and they just didn't. If Rose or TS was in their shoes last year, this game would be over. It would have ended. Weebanism, C tier. Their tiering is decent and they have a lot of resources, but their influence is non-existent. They just follow Eclipse around and stay quiet. Rose, S tier. They are technically the largest alliance in the game by score, and they have the best economy in the game. No one is competing with Rose in terms of growth, and I expect they'll have the largest bank in the game by the end of the year, if they haven't accomplished that already. Aurora, the Purple Space Alliance, B tier. They won politics and war's most interesting war. If you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. Their tiering is really good, their war performance is decent, and they have a lot of influence. There's only two big issues. Firstly, they are quite controversial. Either you love them or you hate them. Secondly, their government is very new. Their leaders recently retired, and it's not clear if their successors will be able to fill their shoes. Hand of Fate, S tier. I mentioned that ARG could annoy people so much that they were paid to stop. Well, Hand of Fate is so scary that some alliances will pay them not to be attacked. Specifically, the Commonwealth, now Legion of Dawn, paid them 12 billion to avoid being attacked. And prior to that payment, a Hand of Fate attacked TKR and did 130 billion in damage. Most alliances probably hate Hand of Fate, but they are indisputably the best fighting force in the game. Only Oblivion comes close, and Hand of Fate outnumbers Oblivion 4 to 1, and is consistently good in both Guerrilla Wars and Winning Wars, whereas Oblivion is only good in Winning Wars. Cataclysm, A tier. They are led by Kigaz, who is one of the game's best diplomats. Their tiering is great, their economy is great, and their diplomacy is usually great. They got outflanked by Eclipse in their last war, which was really satisfying to see. Legion of Dawn, D tier. The Commonwealth and Pakistan recently merged to form Legion of Dawn. Both of these alliances have been in decline for a long time. PCW was a whale alliance that had lost all of its whales to Terminus Est, and was in the middle of an identity crisis. And Pakistan was a whale alliance that had lost all its influence. I hope they improve, but I doubt it. The Minutemen, D tier. Soldiers of Liberty rebranded to the Minutemen, and went from being a democracy with low taxes to an oligarchy with high taxes. They've improved a lot, but they're still below average. The Lost Empire, B tier. They are most famous for getting rolled and then acting as mercenaries in 2021. Overall, I think they're doing very well as a belligerent alliance. Much better than they did as a would-be block leader. Gato, Gato, El Cato. Gato is one of the oldest alliances in nation sim history but they have accomplished very little in PNW, and that's unlikely to change. And that's most of the important alliances in PNW. If there are some new ones, maybe I could remake the video. Uh, and if you disagree with any of my picks, uh, leave it in the comments below. Aside from that, like and subscribe, it's free and you can always change your mind later.